Texas. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good afternoon, and thank you for all being here. It's exciting to see all these students and families here to uh, recognize the National Merit uh, finalists from the school district. We'll have a little um, presentation on there later in the meeting. Um, we'll first move on to approval of the minutes of the meetings held May 9th and May 11th. Do I have a motion to approve? So, so moved. Second. I have a motion and second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same aye. Opposed, same sign. That motion carries. Um, we have one person wishing to address uh, the board on a non-agenda item. Um, Chad Bishop uh, will approach after I uh, read the rules. The board sets aside a portion of each meeting agenda to hear from community members on items of general interest or concern. Comments are limited to five minutes. Uh, there's no, not more than three people, so you get the full five minutes. When you are called to the podium, please identify yourself and your address and the organization you represent for the record of the meeting. If you have any visual aids or handouts, please see a member of our team uh, for approval prior. The board does not take comments during this time on any personnel matters, and all meeting attendees are expected to treat others with respect and civility. The board will not respond to individual comments, and staff may be requested to follow up as needed following the meeting. Thank you for coming tonight, and Chad, if you will please introduce yourself. Thank you. Is your time alert ready? Yeah, just not very loud. Okay, she's got it. We're good. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Do I select the input? Sure. <laughs> oh. Someday I'm gonna learn how. That's right, I can start. Good evening, my name is Chad Bishop. I live at 7405 South Valencia Drive here in Sioux Falls. <clears throat> in multiple previous public input statements to this body, requests have been made to have this board through its membership in the Associated School Boards of South Dakota disassociate itself from the National School Boards Association by exercising its vote and if necessary, the withholding of its dues, especially if they're paid with taxpayer funds. These requests have been made specifically in response to the NSBA's letter to the President of the United States on September 29th of last year, where it was suggested that the parents attending school board meetings be pursued by the federal executive in the same manner as the domestic terrorists. In response to my related statement on April 25th, I understood Mrs. Mickelson to say, the person who wrote that letter has been fired. Speaking of then interim CEO and executive director, Mr. Chip Slavin, the implication being that this was the judgment of a single person at fault and not reflecting on the body at large. However, in the official report published by the NSBA entitled Final Report on the Events Surrounding the National School Board Association September 29th, 2021 Letter to the President, published just this week, it is documented that not only did multiple staff members participate in the drafting of this letter, but that the four officers were also allowed to review and provide input prior to its being sent, as documented in Section B of the Executive Summary. In this document, we also find Mr. Slavin's original draft. In Mr. Slavin's original draft, he was asking that the Army, National Guard, and its military police be deployed to school board meetings. Imagine the state of mind of this person and the people who supported him. Did they imagine they'd show up with AR-15s and intimidate people like me who would come to speak? I think these revelations cast an even longer and darker shadow over this organization and reflect very poorly upon the board who selected these officers. It is my understanding that many of them have quit, hopefully in shame. They deserve the shame. It is my request that this body move through its membership in the Associated School Boards of South Dakota to disassociate from the National School Boards, of Asso School Boards Association withholding its dues if taxpayer funded. It wasn't a lone wolf. 
It wasn't one person. They don't deserve your support. They don't deserve our tax money. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Chad. We'll move on to the approval of the agenda. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. I have a motion second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Same sign that the agenda is approved. On to the good news report, Deanne. Good evening. We actually have a two-part good news report tonight. Uh, we'll start with the reason for our full room this evening. We're pleased to have some of the top students in the Sioux Falls School District among us tonight. The National Merit Scholarship Corporation was established in 1955, and every year since then, the National Merit Scholarship Corporation considers 1.5 million of its most academically talented students across the nation, and then they select the National Merit finalists. That selection denotes each student's potential for academic greatness. We're very proud to have 16 recipients. A couple of them aren't here, but uh, we have 16 recipients in the Sioux Falls School District named as finalists this year. Just before tonight's meeting, we held a reception in their honor just to talk with them and find out a little bit about their futures and also thank their parents for all of the work and effort they put into um, keeping their child on a, on a great path and, and bringing them to the Sioux Falls Public Schools. So I will announce each of our students and I would like them to stand uh, as their name is ca called and then remain standing, if you will. From Lincoln High School, Alana Beatty, Jaden Bartlett, Lila Batchelor, Daniel Bethke, Ryan Brost, Elizabeth Crawford, Leah Derringe, Chloe Howman, Clayton Stucca, Alexis Ung. We have 10 students from Lincoln High School. So congratulate those wonderful students. Our students from, go ahead and sit down, Lincoln. Uh, our students from Roosevelt High School, uh, two of which weren't able to be with us unless one of them or two of them slipped in and I missed it. Cody Hora, Zachary Gerard, Colin Glover, and Dante Fung from Roosevelt High School. And from Washington High School, Noah Morgans, I'm told he was out sick today, so bummer uh, on that. And then Davis Schaefer from Washington High School as well. We wanna congratulate each of these students and their families, and we say thank you from the Sioux Falls Public Schools so repre for representing your school district so positively. We wish you the very best as you continue to pursue your academic uh, future, and we hope that when it's time, we know, uh, asked a couple of questions, we know a number of you are headed off to other places, um, but we hope when that itch happens that um, Sioux Falls, you, you feel like Sioux Falls was a really great place to grow up, that perhaps you come back here and consider this to be uh, a great place to set your roots and perhaps raise your family as well. So we thank you very much for that. Further, we have another acknowledgement with this wonderful group of students. Um, Davis, do you wanna stand? Davis Schaefer, uh, we were uh, told about a week or two ago that David, Davis has been named as a US Presidential Scholar. It's one of the nation's highest honors for high school student and its students, and it speaks volumes about his educational and abilities, and Davis has four older brothers, is that right? One of which is here and is 
or was here. <laughs> uh, he is out in the lobby now. Uh, they were vying for who who maybe had the upper hand. But uh, so congratulations uh, to Davis on his significant accomplishment. Um, and also Davis, uh, along with the student recognition, that he was able to honor a teacher uh, and he selected Mrs. Megan Woundedhead, uh, the English teacher at Washington High School, um, and was nominated by Davis for her uh, commitment and helping him along the way. So congratulations to Davis. And I want to draw your attention real quickly. to the video board. Um, you may have noticed it when you pulled in the parking lot tonight. Uh, we have a brand new addition among the Sioux Falls School District. We have 10 lunch trucks that take food from our central kitchen out to our elementary sites. They are on the road for miles and miles every single day. And they had a very tired old look. Um, the trucks were white and had a single apple on them with no real identifiable characteristics of the Sioux Falls School District. And since we went through a branding and um, change with our website and really wanted to define who we are as a Sioux Falls School District, we were able to work with a local artist to develop um, an image or images that you will see on these trucks, very colorful. You will notice fruit and vegetable characters, um, the trees being broccoli. You can see the falls made out of milk. Um, and the other side of the truck has houses made out of bread and just a fun look at our child nutrition services. And those folks do such a great job in uh, providing meals to our schools, to our students every single day. And it's really a pleasure to be able to see this colorful artwork now representing the Sioux Falls School District as well. And the truck is parked um, off to the south side of the building. So if you did not notice it when you came in, um, take a look at it and just take a look at all of the Sioux Falls based features that are on it. Um, with Levitt at the Falls there, there's a concert going on with an avocado, and <laughs> everybody loves an avocado. Um, and we also plan to use the fruit and vegetable characters um, in other ways to promote our lunch services as well. So uh, really excited to have that um, addition to the Sioux Falls School District. And they really are a business, and every business needs advertising. And so this is a great opportunity for our community to recognize that we take school meals very seriously and that we want the best for our kids. And so we're excited to get these on the road. We have five that will be done um, in the next few weeks, and then we will do five additional trucks uh, in the next fiscal year. So, and with that, that is the good news report. Well, I just would like to add, um, first of all, students and families, thank you so much for being here. And um, I had one parent uh, comment that sometimes we don't recognize uh, students for their academic achievement enough, and I would agree. And so um, please know that we are very, very thankful that you do represent our school district. Um, you are the top, you know, tiny percent in the country of doing this, and I just am very thankful that um, you chose the Sioux Falls School District to uh, be your educational journey, and um, that you uh, will maybe come back to Sioux Falls someday after you've reached what you've decided to do with your education and come back. With that, our school report tonight is on world language. Um, if you'd like to stay for that, you are more than welcome to come, but your students and family are free to go. You don't have to stay for the entire school board meeting and we won't be offended if you leave. So thank you very much for coming. And that leaves us with nobody. Exactly. <laughs> and we had well, a few, wow. well, at least one Spanish immersion. I know. Exactly. Yeah, I thought Charlotte was here. Okay. We'll move on. There were no new conflicts of interest presented this evening, so we'll move on to approval of the consent agenda, items 9A 
through H. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. I have a motion and second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That is approved. On to the supplemental consent agenda. Items 10A, claims to Sanford Health. Do I have, um, or 10A and B, I'm sorry. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. I have a motion and second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That passes with one abstention from board member Ryder. On to the reports of the superintendent. The world language immersion update, Dr. Zeke. Well, good evening. Such a small group now to present to. <laughs> I, I was a little nervous that I would have national merit finalists behind me and they'd critique me, but. Well, and I thought I'd let them go early so that you didn't feel bad <laughs> if they left while you started speaking too. So. They probably wanted me well, to. Well, that's important <laughs> yeah, is your report. They is. probably wanted me to speak in Spanish. <laughs> Well, good evening. My name is Kirk Seek, Director of Federal Programs and World Language Immersion, and I'm here to present the K-12 Spanish Immersion Program Board Report. The purpose of this report is to provide an overview of the Spanish Immersion Programs that we have in the district. And just a brief history, which many of you are aware of, but for those watching in the television audience, the, uh, the this, this, this program began with a study in 2006 and 2007. And it was a broad-based community, a uh, committee of 28 members. And they really went through uh, the ins and outs of programs across the country and uh, decided on the benefits, which include knowing a second language improves overall school performance, communication skills are improved, and we've got a global society that continues to change in a global economy. Knowing a second language is very advantageous in the workforce, and I'll talk more about that with the seal of biliteracy at the end. And like this old dog, it's hard to learn new tricks, especially when it comes to Spanish language. So we know the importance of starting them out. Those young kids absorb that Spanish language so quickly, and when they start in kindergarten, that's very beneficial. Here's our timeline on growing and evolving. Again, starting in 2006, the committee was developed. It goes through into our first class at Rosa Parks, the, the expansion into Robert Frost. And then our first class begins in middle school in 2014. Then we built a building for Spanish immersion in the elementary at Sonia Sotomayor. And then they entered high school in 2017. And last year, we celebrated our first group of Spanish immersion graduates. This year will be our second. We're, we're still excited after year number two of, of graduates. And in 2019, we started up a, a new program in the Spanish immersion, the two-way immersion at Rosa Parks and Hayward. And then we also had our heritage speakers. So in 2019, we had over 1,100 Spanish-speaking students in the Spanish immersion program. The mission is to successfully educate students to develop their biliteracy and foster global competency. We have three pillars, and the three pillars are bilingualism and biliteracy. Bilingualism is the act of speaking fluently to language, whereas biliteracy is speaking and reading and writing. We also still have those high academic standards and uh, achievement. And then social cultural competence is knowing that Spanish language in the different regions and country across the world. As you might imagine, Spanish is much different culturally in Spain than it would be in Mexico or South America. There are three pillars with our programs, the full Spanish immersion, where we take kids who speak English as their first language and then just immerse them in Spanish 100% of the day. We have our two immersion classrooms where we take half the class that speaks English as a first language and half the class that speaks Spanish as a first language, and then we teach them. And half of their day is in English and half of their day is in Spanish. And that's at Hayward and Rosa Parks Elementary Schools 
and then we continue on with that model of a portion of your day in English and a portion of your day in Spanish in the middle and high schools. Here are the course offerings in middle school in Spanish language arts, Spanish science, Spanish social studies. And in high school, we have half credit and full credit, meaning one semester or two semesters. And you can see the variety of courses that we offer at Lincoln High School. Our instructional staff of teachers, coaches, and interns come from all over the world, from Argentina and Colombia, Spain, Venezuela, and right here in the United States. It gives a good uh, amount of culture to our program. There's a smiling picture of our interns. They really, really love kids, and as a bonus, they know Spanish. <laughs> Smiles welcomed. Parent Advocates for Spanish Immersion, otherwise known as POSSE, is an organization of parents that supports the Spanish Immersion Program in two ways. They fund interns, and they donate money for grants for teachers to help supplement the program. We also have a World Language Advisory Committee that is a sounding board for the district. We usually start those meetings off with an overview from all of the principals, and then the district level administrators provide the district level efforts. And then they also, we're also right now sharing ideas about how to make that connection between school to home and promote that connection in the Spanish immersion programs. And then we end so nice, we have a couple of Spanish immersion high school students that will share their perspectives. When we look to monitor the program, we give some assessments. We give integrated performance assessments. We also give the stamp, which is a measurement of their proficiency. We give that in second grade and fifth grade and eighth grade, and then after Spanish language and culture in high school. And we also have the AP exam for Spanish. Now we can use these assessments to identify students who would then receive a seal of biliteracy. And this is either earned through the stamp or the AP exam. And then you also must have the English requirement because it's biliteracy. We need to know that you're proficient in English as well, even though you probably spoke English as your first language. Maybe, we also have Spanish as first language. So you can earn two designations functional fluency and working fluency, and to earn a functional certificate seal, you would need a five or higher in the stamp, or a three or higher in the AP, and then also must have successfully completed your eighth grade ELA class. And the same for working fluency, except it's a seven, it's a five, and then you have to complete the 11th grade. Now, some folks that we talk to say, I scored a five or higher on my stamp, which one will I receive, the functional or working fluency? And especially in the eighth grade, you can only receive the functional fluency because you haven't yet successfully completed the 11th grade. So you'll get that opportunity, you just have to wait a little bit. Our global seals of biliteracy that were awarded last year, or as I would say, earned, Spanish had 151 functional and 23 working. And then we had some functionals only in Latin and German as well. This was data from last year because the AP results haven't come in for this summer. They come in in the summer from the I, tests that were given in the spring. I just want to point out, if you want to go back a slide, so that 151 functional, that's probably mostly all of your eighth graders that took it because the 23, there were only how many seniors that were in Spanish immersion last year. So probably a majority of those seniors received the higher that's right, and then this number would include also, because of the Latin and the German, anybody who took the, the AP Spanish that wasn't even in the Spanish immersion, but can show by literacy, sure. so good point, thank you. Now we're coming to the end of the presentation where we're on the outlook of what's to come. Well, in the fall of 2025, we have these two-way immersion elementary students who will be entering middle school. And at, so or at uh, Rosa Parks and at Hayward, we have about 100 of them that could have the opportunity to hit middle school then. And in 2027, that means that we'd have a potential of 600 Spanish immersion middle school students. And I'll show you a, uh, a graph here in, a, in just a moment. 
in 2028, then they're gonna wave into and roll into high school. And conversations have begun to develop a plan about what about these increased numbers of Spanish immersion students that will be enrolled in middle school in the fall of 25. And this is what this looks like. I included 2023-24. That is when the two-way immersion students will be in fourth grade. They'll move into fifth grade in 2024. And then you can see the bump up in blue, the sixth graders, goes from 126 to 209, that's projected. And then you can see the red in 2006 and the yellow go up in 2027. The green indicates the total number of middle schoolers going from about 400 in 2023 all the way up to 629 in 2027. So we wanna be prepared for that when, that when that day comes, that celebration. Now before we end and I entertain any questions, we do have a special guest and then followed up by a video. Our special guest would like to say a few things in Spanish about the program. Her name is Kaylee McKay, and she attends Sonia Sotomayor. Uh, hola, yo soy Kaylee McKay, y soy de tercer grado. Um, mi, uh, mi, mi clase es muy bueno a hablar en español porque tenemos muchísimas buenas maestros y maestras y pienso que ellos deben recibir más cosas para tener más felicidad en la escuela porque ellos hacen tan buenas a hacer su trabajo. También yo, yo soy um, muy feliz a tener una escuela que habla en español y puedo hablar en inglés también y a mí me gusta eso muchísimo porque eso es una buena oportunidad para tener una conversación en español y también voy a Colombia esa, ese año en el verano y soy muy feliz porque quiero hablar más en español a muchas más personas que hablan español. I, I can't reply to you in Spanish, but did you say you're going to Colombia this summer? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And who are you visiting there? Are you just going for fun? Um, voy a aquí, allí porque yo nací allí. Eso dice que yo quiero ir allí otra vez. Sí. Muy bien. Thank you. <laughs> um, I was born there, so my first language was Spanish, so I'm going there for fun, but I think my mom and dad are going there just to see a few friends from there again. Sure. That's awesome. That's awesome. Good job. Congratulations. Muy bien. <laughs> A very impressive program for very impressive students. I ask the board to acknowledge the World Language Immersion Report, and I stand by for questions. I think we need subtitles next time. <laughs> such, you know, well, it's such a wonderful program, and uh, we during boundaries. You know, you brought up the what, how the middle school and high school the numbers will increase with the two-way immersion addition, and what are we going to do with that? So obviously, that is being studied. We knew that as an issue when we were doing the new boundaries for the middle and the high school, looking at Edison and Lincoln as the uh, original feeder schools for that. So that's something we still have on our plates to examine and look at and where that programming will 
um, end up in maybe multiple sites uh, to allow for the expansion and for it to be closer to some students' home homes as well. Uh, the uh, we are in in the business of attracting students and families to our district. So this is just one of the many things that we want to offer to our families, you know, whether it's uh, AP classes, whether it's activities or sports and so forth. So this is just another thing and the thing to attract people to our district. So um, thank you for keeping it moving forward and hopefully being successful as it has been. I'm sure our parents have some. Good yeah, I was just gonna, um... I think one of the things that I have appreciated is the things that have changed over time and how we've really grown. And I know we had um, kind of an outside look come in back in 2017, 2018. And at that time we were only through eighth grade. And so I would love to see us do something where we could have um, some sort of consultant or somebody come back and really look at the things that we're doing in high school too, just to make sure that we are keeping the integrity of the program and are there other classes that we could offer? I know it's always a balance between offering core classes versus offering electives because there's so many choices for students to make already um, that we wanna have classes that are engaging but not take them away from like their fine arts or other interests that they have. And so um, I would love to have somebody come and just give us some feedback and some um, recognition for what we are doing but then also offer suggestions for maybe things. I know with COVID it was hard for us to look at other schools and get out and do things like that because you couldn't do things in person. And so just taking that opportunity to um, get feedback on, on that as well. I can tell you that um, I have a senior Spanish immersion student this year and um, she wants to be a teacher. And so she spent time, um, a lot of time at Sonia and she did the teacher pathway, but she also did peer mentoring. And so I would love to find a way to kind of mesh those two together even more because I know our teachers appreciate it. They had, my daughter had an amazing experience um, every day that she was there. Today was her last day. She was very sad. Um, but I think as we look at building teachers and how can we build our capacity for teachers in general, how can we build our capacity for immersion teachers who maybe went through our program and now want to come back and give back. So. Um, I think there's so many opportunities um, that we could really utilize. I love that we've started to go to Hayward and help with um, open houses when we have um, Spanish speaking family. There's just so many things that it's exciting to see how it's grown in the last 14 years um, since the beginning and um, how much it can continue to grow and really impact not just the students, but the greater community as well, so. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, do I have a motion to acknowledge the World Language Immersion Update? So moved. Second. <laughs> I have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That is acknowledged. Thank, Thank you, you much, Dr. C. Um, graduation is this Sunday for all four schools. Last day of school is May 25th. And I believe the locations for summer meals and open libraries is on our website. Well, so anything else for the good of public? Seeing none, do I have a motion for adjournment? So, so moved. Second. I have a motion and second. All those in favor of adjournment signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. We are adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>